Okay guys, so on a scale from one to 10, how excited are you to potentially start traveling again soon? We are definitely a 10. Oh yeah. <laughs> and while it's unsafe to travel right now because of COVID, the time to travel again safely is maybe less than a year away. So to help you plan your future trips, we've decided to put together this video of our top 10 tips for finding cheap flights to help you save some money on your post-COVID adventures. Tip number one, use the power of travel search engines. Search engines like Google Flights or Momondo offer you great opportunities to look at different flights at different times with different airlines. So it really allows you to see the variety of options that are on the table for you to best fit your needs. So there's also a great feature in many of these search engines. In Google Flights specifically, it's called the Explore Tool, which allows you to look at future time periods like I want to take a weekend trip six months out and it'll show you the best prices around the world of where to go. <laughs> Tip number two, watch for great deals and sales. So there are many places across the internet to find good deals and sales, but one of the most efficient ways to do it for your time is to join an email list. So there are many great email lists out there, but one of my favorites to join is Scott's Cheap Flights, which offers flights up to 90% off. Now the thing about Scott's Cheap Flights, they only fly out of certain airports, usually major ones, but usually you can work it out because they save you a ton of money. Make sure to keep an eye out for mistake fares. So mistake fares is something when basically airlines accidentally give you the wrong price number for a seat. So for example, in business class, a seat that could be like thousands of dollars, they could accidentally enter it as like $500. And that's something that you could snag because it actually is on the site. So. Luckily, there are many platforms out there that can help you look for mistake fares and even alert you when they show up, because they only show up for a certain amount of time. Yeah. One platform in particular was created by travel YouTubers Kara and Nate called Fairdrop. We love Kara and Nate. Of course, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really powerful tool to find really cheap deals. So for example, a business class flight that's thousands of dollars could show up and you could snag it for $500 or something like that. That's so, so, cool. so if you can snag a mistake fare, it can offer you a once in a lifetime travel experience for an insanely low price. Ding. <laughs> Tip number three, build up travel points or miles. So besides flying a lot, the, path, the fastest way to do this is by getting a travel credit card. That's right, the purchases that you make on a daily basis, like shopping at the grocery store or taking a lift ride, can fund your next trip. How can you not take advantage of that? Credit cards offer different multipliers for different types of spending. So for example, this credit card, my Chase preferred, my Chase Sapphire preferred card, which <laughs> I've had for years, he loves it. <laughs> it gives me two times points on dining and travel purchases, as well as grocery stores right now. Um, and it's a great way to really build up a ton of points because you get two times just for those specific it really is our go-to credit card now. I mean, I use it just as much as he is, to Absolutely. Be <laughs> and many credit cards right now offer really good sign-up bonuses as well. Mm -hmm. So for example, this one offered me 50,000 points for just spending a certain amount of money at the beginning. Um, and that actually funded a round-trip flight to Europe for me. So the sign-up bonuses can be another really powerful part of these credit cards. Credit cards can also offer some great travel benefits, such as getting you into lounges, priority pass for boarding, um, and also maybe getting a free first bank check, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So obviously credit cards are money that is not unlimited, so you need to be very responsible with it, but if you are responsible with it and make sure that it doesn't impact your credit score in a bad way, these can be really powerful tools. Tip number four, be flexible about your travel days and times. So especially if you're traveling on a budget, Locking yourself into one week or day of when you want to travel can really limit the types of prices that you can get. So being flexible about when you go can open up a ton of great possible deals for you when you're looking. So for example, um, Scott's Cheap Flights, the email list we mentioned earlier, while it is amazing, the most of the deals that they offer on that email list are on pretty random days and times. So you should really keep an open mind if you're going to take advantage of those deals to just be open to whatever. Okay, tip number five, keep your destination options open. Sometimes being locked into a one specific destination, it can be really hard to find a cheap flight for that specific destination. Yeah. Said that twice, but basically that's really what it is. And mm -hmm. so um, the best thing you can do is just... Keep your mind open. Thank you. 
it is. Keep your mind open and start trying to go off the beaten path, you know. So even if there's some place that you really want to go, there's plenty of amazing, incredible places throughout the world that are worth you seeing. So if you find a really good, cheap deal, take it. Why not? Exactly. Especially if you're on a budget and you're just looking for an adventure. You know, keep your mind open to a bunch of different destinations because as she said, there's so many cool places to travel around the world. So just take a good deal and go on an adventure. Tip number six, don't be afraid of cheap airlines. You know, airlines like Delta and all those really comfy ones are awesome, especially for long international flights. But you know what, if you're on a budget, don't be afraid to schedule a flight on places like Ryanair, EasyJet, or any of the other budget ones. Because honestly, the point of travel is just getting from A to B and enjoying the destination. The one thing about booking on Treep Airlines though, is to make sure you pay attention to the extra baggage fees, seat prices, all that sort of stuff, which can really add up to make it maybe not as worth it as you might think. Mm -hmm. So just keep an eye on that because sometimes when a price looks really low, it can sneak up on you and actually be pretty be pretty close to the same price as a nicer airline. So that's another thing to look out for. Yep, just dig. But moral of the story, don't rule those airlines out because sometimes oh, yeah. you get a really, really good deal. Tip number seven, don't be afraid of a transfer. Yes, transfers can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but just think of it as being part of the journey. Um, and especially if you are trying to keep, you know, especially if you're trying to be careful with your budget, it can make all the difference and it's fine. You just spend a few more hours and it's totally worth it to get you there. Yeah, I had a personal journey I was taking from Minneapolis to Boston recently and I actually had a layover in New York City that lasted um, way longer than it should have, lasted seven hours, but I spent a full day in Manhattan. So it turned out to be a really fun trip and then I got to Boston eventually, but you know what? It was worth it. It was great. You went on the Brooklyn Bridge and yeah. Times Square. Oh yeah, you, I was jealous almost. <laughs> Don't be afraid of layovers. Tip number eight, bring on the red eye flights. Yes, red-eye flights can be kind of a pain in the butt as well, but they actually are not that bad, especially if you don't have kids or it's just a one-way. Just make sure to remember a neck pillow, a sweater, or something to just make you feel a little bit cozier to get some shut eye or at least rest your eyes if you're not sleeping. Again, it's just about getting from point A to point B, so however you get there, you can always recover when you get to your destination, especially when you're on a budget. Red-eye flights, you can do it. <laughs> Tip number nine, consider booking on multiple airlines. So while it might be really convenient to just book all the way to your destination on one airline, if you're going a long way and you have a layover in between, mm -hmm. consider looking at other airlines that are flying out of that same airport you're flying into. It's really good when you're going international too. One way to do this is to fly into a major hub like New York City or mm -hmm. Miami if mm -hmm. you're going down south from the United States. And from there, you can find some really cheap flights to another continent. So for example, if you're coming from the United States, Look at New York City, see what kind of really cheap flights you can find there. So all you have to do is find a way to New York City and then find the next flight out. That's a great way to save a lot of money and that works all over the world as well. Just look for your major travel hubs wherever you are. And finally, tip number 10, make sure to look at flights ahead of time. So usually around the three or six month mark before you leave for your destination, that's really when you should start looking for your flights and trying to find the best deal. So Google Flights, as we've already said before, can be really good at trying to help you navigate and understand what flights are available that's a little above or a little below price for that point in time. So consider that when you are trying to find a cheap flight. It's a great way to actually track multiple flights so you can actually get email updates on specific right. flights that you want to watch. So you can get a notification from Google saying, your flight has changed to a lower rate and that's a time where you can buy. That's what, I do multi uh, that's what I've done multiple times and it's really led to a lot of really cheap flights for me to Europe. Yep, same here. So those are our top 10 tips for helping you find good prices on flights. If you have any additional ones that you think we missed, make sure to comment down below so other people can see and we'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you like the content we give you, make sure to hit that like button down below. Make sure to also subscribe for future content just like this one. And with that, we'll see you in the next video. Bye.